Oh, hello, and welcome to our new and annual show, Dramatic Flashback. All right. Hey, Siri, will you please bring me my Washington State history book? Whoa, so convenient. All right, anyway, we're going to be talking about a famous American Indian named Kamaikin. He is the chief of the Yakima tribe. In the 1800s, many Americans were coming to Washington and were forcing their way through the plains in search of new land, food, and gold, and more freedom. And this created an automatic clash between the American Indians and the settlers um, due to cultural differences and communication. Oh, honey, ain't this the most prettiest land you ever did see? And it's all for us, too. I know, honey. I can't wait to settle down and build a homestead. <gasps> oh, those disgusting brutes. They better move out of our way, because this land's for us, not them intelligible beings. Ugh, disgusting. In 1855, the first Washington Territory governor, Isaac Stevens, wanted to have all the tribes sell their lands to European Americans who would build and expand on these acres. Convincing the natives was out of question, so Isaac resorted to threatening the tribal leaders, telling them that if they did not move, he would send soldiers to forcefully move them. He also said that he would board up the Columbia River, which was a major food and water source for the majority of the American tribes in Washington state. Kamaikin immediately took up action. He gathered 14 tribes from Idaho to the Cascade Mountains. All these tribes agreed that the settlers were evil and a resistance had begun causing a battle which was later known as the Yakima Indian War in 1855. Kamaikin and the allied tribes would meet at a small northern Oregon tribe where they would discuss how to deal with the government, soldiers, and settlers. Stevens became informed of these meetings by an Indian trader, and he forced Kamaikin into signing a treaty that would create the Yakima Indian Reservation. This still didn't stop Kamaikin. On October 4th through 5th of 1855, he and his warriors were able to defeat a force of 84 men led by Major Granville Holler. On September 5th, 1858, Colonel George Wright, with the help of 700 soldiers, took down Kamaikin and his men at the Battle of Four Lakes. Kamaikin was supposedly wounded when he became struck under a pine tree that had fallen due to a cannon shot. His second wife, Colesta, was able to save him from U.S. soldiers. I will not allow you to take the land which rightfully belongs to my tribe. I will fight you even if we are outnumbered ten to one. Pa! Fools! Fire the cannon when ready. Yes, Colonel George, it shall be done. Excellent. Move out of the way, won't you? I got a job to do. Huh. All right, Colonel George, cannon ready to fire. Excellent. Proceed. Chief Kamai again. Why is there a guy sitting on top of a log? Three, two, one, fire! <laughs> My leg. Ah. Go and retrieve that tribal leader to me now. <gasps> Who's that? She's helping him. Oh my, she's gone. Oh, no matter. We scared them out of the woods for sure. <laughs> After all of his attempts, Kamaikin's fights were not successful. He refused to surrender and ran from Kootenai, B.C. He then left for Montana, where he went to live with the Flathead tribe. This is quite sad but intriguing story of the famous Yakima chief, Kamaikin. It shows how willing the Indians of that day were willing to stand up and fight for what was really theirs, even when they were outnumbered 10 to 1. Well, that's all today, and I would like to thank you for watching Dramatic Flashback. See you next week.